Hi guys! In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about oil. Linseed oil and Danish oil. In the previous video, I made a small stool. And I went to the cupboard after the video to get some oil to put a finish on the stool. And it was empty. So I said, oh, if I'm going to mix up oil anyway, I thought I'd show you all how to do it too. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so the main ingredient in most of the oils we're using in the West is linseed oil. This is boiled linseed oil. I wouldn't recommend trying boiling your own linseed oil. It could be very dangerous. You might burn your house down. So buy boiled linseed oil. It needs to be boiled so that it will dry. We can use just linseed oil on wood if we like, but it does keep soaking into the wood. It takes quite a long time to dry. There's an old adage about linseed oil that says you put it once a day for a week, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and once a year for life. Now that doesn't fit most people's lifestyles today. So what we tend to do is we mix our oil up with some other ingredients which will help it dry faster and be a little bit more durable and need less applications. So the main ingredient, like I said, is boiled linseed oil. The other ingredient is turpentine. Now, there's a few kinds of turpentine. There's mineral turpentine, and there's turpentine that's made out of pine trees. This one's made out of pine trees. I, I prefer it because it's got a great smell. And, uh, and it, I don't know, I tend to feel that it's less toxic, but I wouldn't swear to that because I don't know. But I prefer to use the uh, Turpentine made from palm trees, uh, palm trees, <laughs> pine trees, and and the other ingredient is yacht varnish. Yacht varnish has got long plastic polymers in it, which allows it to move when the wood moves. It's um, a flexible finish. It's a little bit stretchy. So, if we mix yacht varnish with our linseed oil. It gives a harder finish, it allows it still to move, and it's got artificial dryers in the yacht varnish, which will allow the linseed oil to dry faster. It won't soak so deep into the wood, but it will dry, and we can like, add another coat, it'll dry, we add another coat, and we're finished. We don't need to keep adding coats for life. And the turpentine is just to make it a little bit thinner so it will actually soak into the wood. Okay, so. The amounts that I mix up, I use half of the quantity yacht varnish, a quarter uh, linseed oil, and a quarter turpentine. And I mix it up in this pot that I showed you earlier that's empty. And to know what's a half a quarter and so on, what I do, I take a stick and I take a tape measure. I measure how big the jar is. This jar is about 12 centimeters. So then I mark 12 centimeters on my stick. That's six centimeters I write yacht varnish, nine centimeters turpentine, and the remaining three centimeters linseed oil. Then I pop that inside the jar, and I start pouring in all my ingredients until I get to the top of the stick. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So it says on the bottom, yacht varnish. So I'm going to pour in my yacht varnish until the line. I'm going to pour in my turpentine until the next line. So that's done with the turpentine. And now I'm going to top it all off with the linseed oil. There we go. Now I'm going to give all this a big mix 
This is otherwise known as Danish oil. Now some commercial Danish oils have got artificial dryers in them. Uh, some of them have got tongue oil, which is an oil that comes from a nut from a tree in China, I believe, which is a much harder oil than the linseed oil. But I've been using this mixture for at least 20 years and um, I've got no complaints. I've got it on lots of my furniture at home. Lots of my clients have got it on their furniture. And after three coats, it's absolutely gorgeous. It brings up a lovely luster on the wood. It protects it from water and coffee and all sorts of insects that might want to eat the wood. So there we go. So now I've got a mix here, which I've also spilt on the table while I'm talking. All right, so now we've got the oil mixed up. This is the, the stool we did in a previous video that I said I wanted to apply some finish on it. Now I'm gonna dismantle it because there's no glue, no nails. So I'm just gonna pop it all apart. Okay, now to apply the linseed oil, the Danish oil, this mix, I'm just gonna use a brush and you don't have to worry about dust or anything like that. It's not like varnish. It soaks into the wood and it dries in the wood and this is how it protects. So oil should penetrate. That's why we used a lot of turpentine to make it thin. And when I start to apply it with the brush, I'm gonna work it and work it into the wood. You don't have to worry about brush marks or anything. Your goal is to get the oil to penetrate into the wood. In the end grain, it's gonna drink up a lot of oil here on the end grain. So give it the oil it wants. And really work it in. You don't want it all to be uh, dripping in oil. So keep working the oil like this and it will soak into the wood. So I'm going to continue applying oil to all of these pieces. I don't need to explain anymore. Just like I say, don't worry about brush marks or anything. Don't leave it dripping in oil. Work the oil in. I'm going to give everything a coat of oil. And after about 20 minutes, I'm going to wipe off the surplus. Because I don't want surplus oil drying on the surface of the wood and creating a film. Because this film will be too soft and sticky. I only want the wood, the oil that's soaked into the wood to remain. So I'm going to continue to paint all this. Okay, so I've finished applying oil to all the work pieces. Um, and my brush, my beautiful brush, is uh, covered in oil and I want to clean it off. So you should clean it with turpentine. So what I do, instead of taking fresh turpentine and cleaning my brush and throwing the turpentine away, I use the same turpentine again and again and again. And when I've finished with it, I pour it into a jar. Now you can't really see, but all of the solids and all of the oils gradually sink down to the bottom of the jar. And the turpentine that stays on the top is, is clear. Now I know it's got a tinge of color to it because I did some oil with some red tinge in it recently. But it doesn't matter, it's going to clean all the oil off my brush. And the reason I tip it from here to here is to leave all that dirt, all of the solids in the bottom of this jar. Clean out my brush in here. Clean everything off with a rag. Because I use a lot of oil and I don't want to just keep throwing away all this turpentine. I'm sure it's not very good. Um, and like you see, these are just old cheapo brushes that I use again and again for oil. So it doesn't have to be immaculately clean, just so it doesn't dry up into a big lump afterwards. So there we are. So as far as I'm concerned for applying oil again, this brush is clean enough. And the turpentine, I pour back into this jar. And put that back on the shelf. I'm just waiting for the oil to dry a bit before I wipe it off. All right, so 20 minutes have passed, and now this is a bit tacky, a bit sticky. So now I need to rub off any surplus oil. Now, I don't recommend you using 
a colorful cloth because sometimes the turpentine, the oil might break down the colors and you end up with color coming off from the work. Use an old white t-shirt. I find this is the best stuff. And the more time, the old, this one's not that old, but the more time they've been through the wash, the better, you don't get any fluff on them. Don't use transfers. The oil can also break down the ink of the transfer and come off on your work. So the best thing is a white cloth going to lie these down because they'll surely fall over the minute I start rubbing and I'm going to rub in the direction of the grain and you want to rub it all over like this until it feels silky smooth and there's no sticky residue left so I'm just going to get on and do that okay so now it's all rubbed it'll take anything from 12 to 24 hours, depending on the wood, for the oil to dry. And after the first coat has dried, what you're going to need to do is give it a very light sanding with a fine sandpaper, just to take off the fibers that have swollen up with the oil and made it feel a little bit rough. So you give it a light sanding to take off those standing up fibers, and then apply oil again. Now. The second time, you can use a rag. You don't have to use a brush because it won't soak up as much the second time. Um, so if you're using a rag, don't use a huge rag like this. Take a small piece. Something like this. And use a small rag because otherwise all the oil will be wasted and left in your rag if you use a big one. Rub it in with a rag. Really rub it in. Get it into the wood. When you've finished, don't throw this rag in the garbage can. It can spontaneously combust, believe it or not. Uh, the best thing to do is lay it outdoors on a wall or something like this so that it'll dry. If you screw it up in a ball, when linseed oil dries, it creates heat because the linseed oil has been boiled. So there's this latent energy inside the linseed oil. And as it dries, it gets hot. And on a day like today here, it's very hot and dry and if I threw that in the garbage there's a the danger it might catch fire so just spread them out to dry before you put them in the garbage can and everything will be fine okay so after you've put the oil the second time 20 minutes rub it off wait 12 24 hours light sanding rub on oil rub off oil and you're done three coats Danish oil rubbed oil finish and I think it's really the best finish. It's very easy to maintain. If it gets a scratch or anything happens to it, just take a bit of oil and rub a little bit of oil over it. It's not like varnishes that peel off and create all sorts of trouble. It's very easy. The dust doesn't stick to it when you're painting. You don't have to have a dust-free environment. I really like using oil on wood. I use an awful lot of it. And uh, I hope you're gonna give it a go. Okay, guys. I'm waiting for the oil to dry. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new about oil and oil finishes. Um, I enjoyed making it and uh, I'm not gonna assemble this now because it's still sticky. I'll have to wait another 12 hours. So if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share it with your friends and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.